Hi there. In this video, I will talk about filling up the any values. So in the last video, you must have seen the how you can identify and drop the null values. That's one of the ways to treat your null values or the missing values. But another way to treat the null values or the missing values is to fill them up. And here in this video, I will show you a couple of different methods by which you can fill the null values. So first of all, let's import our libraries, which is pandas as pd. And we will import another library, which is numpy as npa, because I will just create a custom series, which will having the nan or a number value, uh, which we can create it by using np.nan. So I'll just execute that. And I will just create the object which is null values is equal by creating pd.series and here I can specify those some dummy numbers which can use this parenthesis and then these brackets and say let's say one uh, comma np dot n a n comma two comma n p dot n a n three four and another missing value another missing value and let's say it for example and let's go ahead and execute this all right now it's fine so if you just print the values you will see that one nan which is not a number two three and then not a null value. So you have a couple of different methods uh, within uh, within this uh, within Python to take care of. So the methods like uh, forward fill and uh, back fill. So what it does is it takes a first value in case of forward fill and based on what you have specified it, it will going to fill up that value. So here in this case one is here and dot n will have one. Now you, it has seen second value then it will fill up this value. In case of backward fill, it will see the last value and fill up the values above which are null. So let's see these things in action. All right, so I will write null value start fill na. I just press the tab and uh, it has some properties and the method we are looking at here is this. Right now the method is none, but if I show you the values for method so you have b fill f fill pad none the most important are b fill and f fill which i will just show you pad is i think pretty much similar to f fill and back fill is b fill so let's go ahead and method is equals to f fill and press enter and now you can see for that index one Earlier it was NAN and now it has 1. So in case of forward fill, as I explained it earlier, it is taking up the values which is right above this null value and filling up that particular piece. Similarly, in case of 2, the 2 is coming over here for third index number, which is which was earlier null. When in case of this fifth index number, the value is 4 and right after that two values are null. But now you can see the 6 and 7 values are having 4 and 4. Now let's uh, replicate it or reverse it using B fill. And now you can see it's completely opposite. All right. One other thing is when you are using fill NA, let's say you don't need any value, but you just want to replicate the missing values with uh, let's say zero. So you can just simply specify zero. And now in this case, you will see that uh, you are getting zero for all those values. So this way you can replicate zero with the help of, and that will help you uh, when you are doing some operations which require that, uh, especially in machine learning, which requires that there should not be any missing values. So it's better to just replicate it with the zero and don't have any missing values. Another method that uh, you can use is, and it's pretty interesting because I think in many cases it gets used using the average value np.mean. 
All right. I just need to specify that's why it is giving a little bit odd output, just the function mean. And uh, I need to specify null underscore values. Now you can see the mean value 3.6 is replicated all over the place. So this way you have np.mean and there are other methods as well uh, within the np. Say for example sum and min max and other things which by which you can replicate the null values. That I delete that is based on how your data set is and your research problem. Now let's use another parameter. So far we have been using method parameters f fill and now I'm using limit parameter and specifying one. So what it does is after index zero there was a null value which was uh, the first value and it will properly pop up but in case of index number four you had uh, two missing values. So in that case or maybe it was I think five because I can see 3.6 3.6 coming two times. So for index number five you have after that you had two missing values so it will just fill up the value for sixth one but it will not fill the value for seventh one and that's what limit means that just add or just fill the consecutive value or the next appearing null value so let's go ahead and see it in action all right something i have uh, i guess silly mistake or uh, who will write fill on it okay now you can see after five you have six as four but for the seventh value there is an and because we have specified limit is equals to one that means just fill the very next value not the other missing values the next and very interesting method to fill the null values is interpolate well, when you start, if I write interpolate and just execute this, you will see some interesting patterns like for 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 4, 5.33, 6.66. So, interpolate uh, is basically a statistical term and uh, especially useful in such cases where you have the data, let's say, specifically in case of distributed time series the data is distributed over time period and for a couple of time periods the data is missing so what it does is it looks at the internal trend of the data about how the values have been distributed uh, what is the interval and uh, based on that trend and interval it it basically fills up the value so what it sees over here is that uh, there is first value there is for there is value 1 for index 0, for index 1 there is null and for index 2 there is 2. So between 1 and 2 probably you may be having 1.5 based on the trend. Similarly between 2 and 3 2.5. Now between 4 and 8 you have two null values so that's why it has changed the equation a little bit and saying 5.33 and 6.667 and then filling up the missing values. So this is pretty interesting and it follows the interval or the trend of, of your series. Say for example, if you have, let's say, so if I just show you by creating another series, um, interpolate underscore series is equals to pd dot series and write one comma and p dot and comma let's say five comma n p dot n a n comma nine comma n p dot n a n comma thirteen so you can see that I have the interval of four over here so between one and five four values five and nine again four values so that way I have uh, just created a simple series which is following up some some sort of an interval a proper interval and I'll just execute that and I will write interpolate underscore series dot interpolate and execute that and you will see that one and after that it has written three and then five 
and then 7 and then 9 and then 11 and 13. So this way it has identified a trend that after 1, between 1 and 3, there is a sp interval of, th uh, there is an interval which indicates that probability is two steps or three. A regular interval like arithmetic uh, progression it is following and that way it has uh, populated one after three and five and then seven and then nine and eleven so that way you can see how it is uh, how it can help you to really populate a bit of a realistic series or a realistic number based on the trend your data is following so that's about it uh, and you can see its different method uh, how the limit direction the downcast method as you can see it is linear uh, i think there is there can be geometric uh, method if i am not wrong or a couple of others but you can explore and then you have limit and in place so this way uh, you can fill up your any values and uh, get the desired output so i'll meet you in the new video the new topic